every year about this time, this becomes a place of work and excitement, for they're getting ready to hold the fair. Dear future self, good morning. The first thing that I did when I woke up was go see the little black baby cow cupcake. This summer I am showing my black Angus cow named Sunny. This will be the first time that I am showing in four years. I am excited to start showing again because it makes me happy seeing how much enjoyment it brings to my twin sister, Mara. I am so proud of my twin for everything that she has accomplished showing over the past few years. Love yourself. Hey Dan, this is Dave with the Cincinnati Circus Company. I have got a gig for you and I am hoping that you can do it. Uh, it is performing at the Champaign County Fair. And I know you're gonna rock this out. I know you're gonna love it. So call me back. Let me know if you can do it right away, okay? Thanks, bye. Yeah, we got the Demolition Derby at the County Fair Oh tonight. yeah. Okay, so what's my lineup here? Okay, Demolition Derby at seven o'clock. Gates open at 10, Carnival at five. And then things kind of wrap up. Here, the fun of the fair is in the making. All the shows and rides and make-believe of the Midway. I like this one better because it's got the little ladybugs and I like the green color on it. So the french fries are probably all getting ready. They're warming up the good grease at Colors. Here's the part I hate, the bill. <laughs> Everyone ready? It's time to go. And now they're off to have a day of work and of fun at the fair. future self, it's finally summer break. When dad picked us up after school today, I felt like a weight had been lifted off me. Mari and I are really looking forward to showing at the county fairs this summer. There is a lot of work to do to get ready. We wouldn't be able to do it without my dad. We took some time and wandered down those wild lines. Here at the Olsen's farm, they're getting ready for the fair too. This is Johnny, and this is bigger brother Bob. Sister Anne is going too. Each of the boys is taking his finest calf to the fair. I'm Mara Turner and I'm 15. I'm Meg Turner and I'm 15. My dad's always been on a farm and his dad. And I think we're the fourth generation of living on a farm. Dad raised Angus cattle his whole life. Grandpa had them his whole life. So since I was walking, I think I started. We grew up across the road from this place. Probably in the early 90s, my brother got into shorthorns a little bit. We both showed, my sister showed a little bit. Back when I was six or seven, we had a few cows here and I really wanted to do something with it. So then my dad told me the idea of showing and then I watched to my older cousins, and then I just really wanted to do it, and that's kind of how I got into it. Good job, Dolly. Good job, Mara. We watched the sun as it slowly crept. So this is my room, and then in here is my big bucket of ribbons. This is our like main one that we use. And that one's from when my dad showed that I decided to keep. Here is the quilt I have been working on. And I finally finished about two weeks ago. I started an interest the same way we she did. But then back in my sixth grade year in junior high, I decided I wanted to quit because like I really wasn't that interested and I didn't want the commitment to take all that time to just work with an animal. From the moment that we met, you were I ran all junior high and then summer would have been starting my second season of cross country. 
and then I do drama. This one I got um, in 2018 when I ran junior high cross country and I got this spirit award. I have this from drama this year from the, the musical Little Shop of Horse. And then you have all my valuable stuff that I always hang up here. You watch the sun as it slowly crept From the horizon to the place we met As a freshman in high school, I realized that I like seeing what my sister does and the enjoyment it gets from her and her animals. It made me want to show again. We spend countless hours in the barn getting ready for one of these. And we're in there year round. It's not just a come to the county fair and go home. It takes a lot of weeks and months ahead of time to be ready for one. It is a 24 hour day job. I woke up around 6.30, then I come out to the barn at like 6.45ish, get the show cows in, feed them, feed all the cows out there, come back around um, 7.30, collect the feed pans, feed hay, and then go to school on a, like a school day and then come back home. Around five o'clock, I come and do chores and then let them eat and then let them back outside for the night. I have a love for them and then if you treat them correctly, they, they love you back. They're just special. It teaches the kids such a work ethic and responsibility and I don't know that you can put a price on that as a parent. Yes, you got, there is a budget. You can only spend what you can spend, but you put everything into it you can and still survive. But it's a lot of work, but I'm glad the kids want to do it. It's kind of carrying on what I've always done. The first agricultural fair of the Champaign County Agricultural Society was held at this place yesterday and came off with a spirit decidedly creditable to the society and the county. Urbana Union, October 21st, 1852. When the human race first walked the face of this earth, they needed food and they needed fiber to make the clothing that they wear. And as they started searching, they realized they had to be, to a degree, maybe even competitive about picking that right kernel of corn to grow the right stalk, or the right pig to make the best bacon. Then they were able to provide more and more food for humanity. So when humanity had more food, they had more time. With that time, then they could be competitive in making apple pie, or they could make more time doing sports activities, or reading, or competing. And so a county fair is kind of a result of competition, if you will, in the agriculture side because they now had time they didn't need to spend looking for food and fiber. The word fair is a Latin word, so I think it was spelled F-A-I-R-E. And that basically was a meeting, a gathering of people to observe and maybe to assemble. Usually it was done around the holy day. And so while people were there to worship, then you had vendors there selling food and selling scars perhaps or that sort of thing. The first fair in North America was in 1775. And it was, it was as a result of all these fairs that happened in biblical times, moving across into Europe, and then coming across the ocean, that fair, 250 years later, is still running. The first fair in the actual, what we would call United States, was started in 1811, the concept of county fair by a gentleman named Alaka Watson. And he was a, what well, today we would call a farmer and a politician, but he was a, an organizer, if you will and he organized a fair in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, which they called the Berkshire Agricultural Society. It was basically known as a cattle show. And that evolved over the next several years in that part of, of New England, if you will, where every county was having county fairs, just in a matter of three or four years. The fair, we must have our relaxation. Here is the spot for that. The shows are here, peanuts, everything that goes with a fair we have. The oldest continuous fair in Illinois is the Coles County Fair down at Charleston. And originally it was just a one-day fair. 
but they had maybe 10,000 people show up for I don't know how they got so many people into these events as they did. 1841, there was another organization called the Union Agricultural Society. This group in 1841, they started a fair at Naperville. That fair evolved into a lot of other Northern Illinois fairs. That's kind of how county fairs kind of boomed in Illinois. Years ago, county fairs and state fairs were the events. I mean, it was the place to be seen, so to speak, and social gatherings, people would, I mean, there weren't not that many vendors to even, so people would pack picnic lunches, and you know, um, I remember my grandma talking about making, you know, fried chicken, just to have some type of different, you know, meal. Most of the visitors at the fair have a quick bite at one of the lunch stands. And a foot-long hot dog looks mighty good to these boys. Where the smoke. I'm Jim Colors. I own and operate Colors French Fries. Thanks, Chip. Yep. A famous Colors Fries in Forest Color has been doing this for I don't know how many years, Forrest, how many years been doing uh, French fries? My uncle started the business in 1945. He had just got home from the Second World War, and him and some of his buddies decided to go on a road trip. They were driving through Pennsylvania, and they came across this lady rolling paper cones and selling French fries. No, I went to Pennsylvania and seen some woman selling in a beer joint out through a little hole. Well, I figured if she could sell them in the beer joint, I could sell them on the fairs. <laughs> Well, even if I met you in another life, still feel like I would end up with you. You've got this kind of energy that makes me smile. I just want to settle down with you. Had the idea, but he didn't really have the money, so he had a friend of his that was in the jewelry business named Hal Fisk, and he ran the idea by him, and he said, well, sounds like a pretty good idea, and started hitting the carnival circuit and uh, built a business out of it. The first time I ever worked French fry stand was uh, in 1974. I was 10 years old and he needed a little bit of help at the Ohio State Fair and I went over there and hung out with him and uh, was hooked ever since but it, he made me finish high school before he let me go to work for him. <laughs> so this is my 41st year and just trying to, to keep his legacy going. Even if I met you in another life, still feel like I would end up with you. You've got this kind of energy that makes me smile. I just want to settle down with you. My marigold, your marigold. It was simple. He bought a bunch of potatoes and he told me I buy, I buy the best grease. It's the best grease. If you get too many items in your, in your stand, something's going to get compromised and that's why my uncle always sold fries one size that way we got one thing to concentrate on and make it right i want people to come to my uncle's stand and get french fries and say that's how your uncle used to do it you know you you don't take the country out of the boy right and i love this farm country here in illinois and well, in Ohio, there's a lot to say, you know, where I was born and raised, and that's why I guess I enjoy it so well. Every lady attending this famous fair will make it a point to hear the famous Mrs. Rohrer give her famous cooking lectures on the famous Detroit Jewel gas cook stove. Mrs. Rohrer will explain the many advantages, conveniences, and economies of gas cook stoves, for it is her opinion that there is no stove in the world like a gas cook stove. 1879. Joseph Kuhn and Son. Best made and finest fitting wearing apparel in the world. Our boys' safe combination suits, where you get twice the value for only half price, is a blessing for the youngsters. Mothers have appreciated this line. And consequently, 
our enormous sale, 1879. They say when a girl walks the edges of the world, she'll find herself if she looks for long enough. They say when a girl walks the edges of the world, she'll find herself. If she looks for long enough I started when my oldest was a baby, so probably close to 35 years now. I took a one home ec class for a semester in eighth grade, and that's the only real sewing class I've ever had. I had a friend whose husband was in the Air Force, and so she was stationed in Rantoul for a while, and so she showed me what to do and how to get started, and I pretty well taught myself otherwise what to do. I graduated in December of 85 and had my daughter in January of 86. So right away, I did homeschooling and added three more children after that. So we, I stayed home with kids for quite a while. My oldest daughter, you know, when she was younger, we didn't have a lot of money and she knew that. So she would let me make things for her and and she never complained about what she had to wear. I mean, we did a lot of our shopping at the thrift store and the resale shops, and yeah, it seems like a different lifetime ago looking at all of these, though. It was such a long time ago. They grow so fast. I mean, it's just amazing to me, and people always told me that. Cherish each moment. There's so much in the day-to-day -day that you don't appreciate. I've been teaching special ed for 17 years and I, I try hard to be loving and kind and show, I pray for my students every morning before I, I go to work, that I can, I can be the kind of person they need to see. I have nine grandkids at the moment. Um, Lord Jesus, be our guest, one of these, I guess, to us, see us even. I mean, we've seen our family, our children, through some really difficult things over the years. I made a dress for my son's daughter to come home from the hospital in, and my daughter-in-law had uh, cancer at 22, and they said she probably would never have any children. So now she has two beautiful children, and um, so I wanted it to be extra special, and I think it's one of the most precious and most beautiful things I've ever made. Doing things for the fair has become a family tradition. My children always enjoyed, you know, entering things at the fair and looked forward to going to the fair. And now my grandchildren are starting that too. I think it's wonderful to have that time with them and then to pass that on. And it is kind of a lost art though. I truly hope that my legacy is just my love for my family and for God and um, for the children, that they know that, that I love them very much and that's why I did the sewing I did. I think that's one of the main reasons I do this is just to give people something that's special just from me and from my heart. And now the Midway. From the pony rides, the airplane rides, the Ferris wheel, the field of world, everything for a hilarious time for young and old from 6 to 60. Dear Harold, I wish to recount to you the ill-fated showing of the circus at the Champaign County Fair in 1918. It was a dreary time nationally. World War I was on, and we were sure it would last for years. And to add to it, the streetcar employees went out on strike. We were dependent on streetcars in 1918. Then it rained that week. It really rained. Not a drizzle of Presbyterian rain, 
but an outpouring of real Campbellite water. The day of the circus was a terrible day. The big tent collapsed, the racetrack resembled Crystal Lake, horse-drawn vehicles got stuck in the mire. The fair took one terrible financial beating. That was a dismal day of days in this community. Yours truly, Burford, August 15th, 1956. I'm pretty unique uh, in that um, my father is not a performer, my mother was not a performer, uh, but they were highly encouraging. My father definitely wanted me to be more into sports, but as I got older he realized that wasn't going to be the case. I actually didn't start doing circus until I was 18 years old. Uh, my high school girlfriend, she actually broke my heart as I graduated high school, but we worked at the same ice cream shop. It's a Grater's Ice Cream. I would have to see her every day, and it was a difficult time for me, a lot of transition, leaving high school, going into college. And so I remembered actually a card trick that my dad showed me, and I would start doing that when people would come through the ice cream line. And a lot of people really loved it, and I was like, there's something here. Eventually, people started to come into the ice cream shop where I worked and say, is the magic guy working? Seems to me a man can do a lot of thinking When he's staring down the barrel of a gun and Eventually, we hired a balloon artist and he came in, he did balloon animals and he saw me serving ice cream and then doing a trick or two and he said, you should check out my circus. A week later, I had my first practice at the circus. They hired me on the spot and a week later, I quit graders and this became my full time. I became, within a year, one of the best magicians in Cincinnati. I would spend hours and hours every night. I just was like drinking knowledge of how to do tricks. Same thing happened with juggling. I couldn't stop myself. I'm taking all these gigs, I'm working this much, I'm really here. I'm a part of this circus. I don't want to run, run, run no more. I don't want to run, run, run no more. In my early 20s, my mom uh, passed away and that was very difficult for me. Six months after my mom passed away, um, my, uh, my stepmother was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor. And about a year after that, she passed away. So as you can imagine, that was a very, very tough two years. And especially when I was like 22, 23, those are very formidable years in kind of discovering who you are. So I was having a very difficult time in a lot of ways personally, but the circus was like my rock. It was always there, there were always gigs, there were always things that I could go to to make people happy and to be part of like a joyous occasion. My true role model is my father. And when, when I was able to see what he was able to do emotionally and just being at the right place at the right time to see the doctor, to get the, to get the correct um, diagnosis, to, to check everything that he possibly could, I was able to kind of say, okay, I wanna be that kind of man. If I was married and my wife was terminally ill, could I be as strong for her as he was for Gail? And I thought, how, how do I even begin? Now every morning I go to war with the ghosts I met the night before Just trying to find the grace in my mistakes These monsters I wanted to do something with my life so that I didn't feel like the only time I was worthwhile was at a gig. And so shortly after Gail passed away, um, I applied to UC. They said, your grades are too low. <laughs> uh, you flunked out of your last college for a reason. And so I applied to a Cincinnati State, which is a community college here, and they, they took me in. And I did well, of course, then right, went right there to the uh, University of Cincinnati, and um, I crushed it. No There are so many moments, uh, I, I couldn't even tell you, but I'll perform at maybe a county fair or maybe a gig one year and I'll just amaze somebody. And oftentimes it's like a, a young kid and they'll just be like, oh my God, how did you do that? And to know that I took a moment for them and literally made it magical means so much to me. And I really got to find my place in this world. I really got to find my place in society. I got to find my place in who I am through the circus. I 
A.P. Tucker, dentist. While I am not a dental college, nor a so-called company of expert specialists, I can and will do all kinds of first-class dental work for a small amount of your gold, silver, or greenbacks as any other dentist or company in central Illinois. You can find my office upstairs over F.K. Robeson and Brothers Big Store, Champaign, Illinois, 1879. Old timers who attend a local fair in 1911 or so will remember that it was on the local fairgrounds the county residents first saw a close up view of their first aeroplane. The plane was kept in a closely guarded tent, and much publicity was made over Rene Simon, a Frenchman making the first flight. The fairgrounds were packed at 50 cents a head just to see this freak of travel, and there was an overflow crowd of several thousand curious at the adjoining park. After hours of waiting, Rene took off and flew east several hundred feet, past the packed grandstand and back again, the noise being terrific. The trouble came afterwards when people at Crystal Lake Park claimed they had seen the exhibition for free, which caused a fair bit of grumbling for those who paid 50 cents to enter the fairgrounds. My name is Taylor Feldkamp, and I drive a tow truck. I own Feldkamp's Towing in Champaign-Urbana. My dad's ran it before I did, and then I took over about six years ago. Went from, you know, just your basic one or two tow trucks to a fleet of 30 or 40 trucks now. Hello? Hello? I'm passionate about it and helping customers in the middle of the night, in the winter, winter or, you know, summer, or whatever the weather conditions are. Uh, just let them know we're on our way. If you've had fails, you know, day and night, and weeks Hello? are better than others, but that's kind of part of growth is failing and learning from what you need to do and, you know, what you don't need to do. Never ends, huh? No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it does not end. business that's 24-7, 365. <laughs> There's a little time to play here and there. Our T-47 from Urban, Illinois, Taylor Feltman. Out in the garage as a family and, you know, working on cars and going to the demo and pretty much been in my blood. So my dad used to demo back when he was younger, and then my grandfather um, helped him out, and I was just pretty much around it from a young age, and then I was just kind of hooked from there. something for a while and you get good at it it's kind of hard to, to get away from it. When I was younger I probably ran probably 20 or 30 derbies a year. Uh, I'd be in here every night like it was a full-time job welding and torching and I'd have 10 cars built for the summer. As I got older and had more responsibilities and work got bigger it's just kind of taking a toll.
three and a half year old son. His name is Tyson. Tyson be here all day, every day, in the tow trucks, out of the tow trucks. Give your truck a hug and kiss. Good night. Say good night. I think going to the county fair, I'm just gonna go and have a good time, win or lose, and it'll be for him. Here too, from far and near, farm folks are bringing in the products of the harvest, the choicest of their animals, the finest of the things that are grown on the farms. The real basis for a county fair is to learn about agriculture in some way. Kids can come and learn about how a pig is born, or about how a cow's milk, they can actually physically go up and milk a cow. Maybe it means walking through the barn and getting a little bit of manure on your shoe. What is that? It's life, that's what it is. To you. Dear future self, today I am showing at the Fisher Fair. This is my first time showing in about four years. Meg gets tense, but Meg's nervous about a lot of things, and that's fine. I mean, she doesn't want to forget when she's out there what she's doing. I said, Meg, just go do it. It's a county fair. Just enjoy yourself. That's what you're here for. If you mess up, you mess up. It's not a big deal. The livestock has changed a lot simply because there's fewer farmers, and there's fewer livestock farmers. Back then, when I was a, was a kid, the farmer would bring in a large number. But now that's all changed. The youth show them hoping to make money and frequently they do make good money because they show them a lot of places and usually end up selling for a good price. You make money maybe a couple years and lose money the third year. But crop farming's the same way. You don't make money every year on it. I mean, there's years that, there's years you're hoping you can break even, and there's years you do okay. In my first class that I showed in, I was first because I was the only one in the class, which means that I go back in the ring for champion. She puts her mind to it, she's committed to it. She's always been that way. Meg doesn't really care how she gets along in the show ring. She's just happy to go out there and be here to talk to other kids and hang out, and that's perfectly fine. When I went back in the ring for champion, I got reserve heifer. I was not expecting to get reserve, but I did, and I am so proud of myself. Remember, you are beautiful and one of a kind. Love yourself. Coming out to the Champaign County Fair this evening. We hope you have a good time and come back again soon. You can tire maybe on What's the secret to your success? Is it, now I've heard it's the potato, I've heard it's the oil, I guess maybe it's both, uh, or is it the guy back here It's making them? Maybe? It, it takes all three of them. French fries, Michelle. You can have the best potatoes, which I don't use nothing but the best, and same way with the oil. When the potatoes come in, in the back door of the trailer, we wash them and peel them, and then we run them through an automatic potato slicer that my uncle built himself. Hold them on water, drain the water, get some of the starch out of them, and run them right through the fryers and serve them fresh out of the fryer. Start out with ketchup, but it's so messy that I used to have some laundry bills, so now I've seen that the fish and chips, they use vinegar, and it went over good with the British, so I tried it, and it's taken me years, but now I've weaned them away from ketchup. And yes, we have had people that go, you need to provide drinks and you need to do this. And what if you did cheesy fries and, and all this? But we are keeping tradition alive by doing it the way it is. You know what Forrest Nudie's talking about? Create an event. Something good is coming down. Because you go to the county fair now, very rarely is there not a line there still. I remember one time he said, yep. When I see that line getting shorter, I tell my boys, slow down.
I've been trying to be alive. If your help is not courteous and friendly to the public, they're the ones, regardless of what they say to you, they're always right. One of my main guys now that's been with me quite a while now is, is my nephew. We usually don't have a, a hard time keeping our employees because, you know, we take pretty good care of them. That's the key, take care of your employees and they'll take care of you. I'm usually within 100 miles of home. Typically we call each other every single day. It might just be, I'm doing great, everything's fine, I'm really tired, I'm going to bed, love you, see you later. So, um, but, but that's nice to get that phone call every day. It's fine all summer, because you know where you're going next and stuff like that, but when you get to that last, last fair in November, it's time to go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You never see any old carnival people in retirement homes because you don't retire from this business, you die in it. <laughs> Demonstrations are given in the arts and crafts in which the women excel. Hooked rugs, quilts, canned and baked goods all show the results of the handiwork of the Ohio farm women. Exquisitely done. to make sure everything's as perfect as possible. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Come tomorrow. So Rapley. to our roots and what we find valuable, what we find oh, the best of the best, you know, whether it be a quilt, whether it be a jelly, uh, you know, a cake recipe, uh, an animal that we've raised. Smocking, isn't that cute? Oh, and piping. She's done piping on the bias here too. That's a great detail. Here in the big cattle barn on the fairground, folks are at work early, tending and grooming their cattle. Bob and Johnny are there early too. They're getting their calves ready for the show. I had it all figured out. Knew which road I would go down. Thought I could do it all on my own. Then you came around. When has its The people that aren't used to the farm don't really know what we do. Mara just kind of came natural to her. Mara has always enjoyed it and she, that's what it takes. It's not like it's a luxury lifestyle. Boredom, pure boredom. It does get, it can get bored just a little when you're doing the same thing every single day. But I enjoy pretty much most of it. It's like getting her up at 4.30 in the morning to wash cattle. She never says a word, she doesn't. She gets up, I tell her once to get up, she gets up. But I was Mara is committed to doing the best she can do. She'll get upset at times, but she knows that you got to continue on. You can't just give up. There is an option to lose in life. Now the boys take their calves to the arena where the show is beginning. You ready to just start this thing? Yep, I'm ready. All right. Into the big shadowy arena. Many other boys and girls are leading their calves. Pay attention. Thank you. 
And the 4-H uh, groups are the ones that end up um, getting kids involved in showing and working with livestock and so those feed into the county fairs and then the county fairs feed into the state fair. It is a wonderful thing to be able to say, yes, I started out in this county and I represented my dad's or my grandpa's or somebody's various breed that they have been um, racing for a long, long time. So they have a lot of pride. Now the judge is coming down the line. He looks at each calf closely with a practiced eye and quickly sees the best and the weakest points. We're not meant to be isolated, we're not meant to be alone, we're meant to be with others. And so to, to bring it together in such a Americana, I'm showing my pig today, I'm showing my sheep today, that's just good. It takes careful work to choose the calf with just the right size, and build, and weight, and firmness. The judge's work is done. He has picked the winners. Well, the champion's blue ribbon goes to a girl. Johnny gets a ribbon, too. His calf is a winner. Dear future self, we've had two great show days at the county fair. I was so nervous, but I got through it. I won first place in my division, and Mara won showmanship. I'm so proud of her. Showing our heifers again has given me a real boost of confidence. There's only one thing left to do. Water balloon fight, stay tuned. Not much younger than I Don't you know that you've got your whole life to be Worried about all the things that are bringing you down There's a driving technique, there's a building technique and you can have the best parts in the world and if you don't have the know how to drive the car and make good hits then you know, you're not going to win. I put every car back together the same now and me and dad tune the car for three or four hours, you know, days and days before the derby. So I know when I run that I'm gonna have to break something or lose a wheel to lose. Don't go thinking that's how it has to be. When I'm behind the wheel, I kind of just am doing my own thing and I'm kind of in my own little world and I don't have to worry about work. And you know, I've spent the last month and if I get 10 minutes to figure out what I've built that's going to win or lose. It's, you know, kind of a stress reliever and a good feeling. For now be young. Monsters and beggars will be at your door and it's Hard to tell who you're not anymore, but don't go trading the number for your last name. You know, for a long time, and still a little bit to this day, I'm such a yes man because I just want to get out there in front of people and just crush these shows and learn new stuff. And when the show goes bad, learn from that too, or just cringe. <laughs> he's daring. He's dashing. He's dashingly daring. He's abnormally tall. I'm very he's tall. Dan. I am Dan. Being involved in live performance, I know how important it is to have that real personal connection. And when I perform for a magic trick for a kid that isn't already surrounded in their own head with technology, they experience, I think, something that was being experienced 100 years ago, 200 years ago, this kind of amazement and joy. And you realize, like when I swallow the balloon or the sword or whatever it might be, that's real, that's really happening. This isn't YouTube, this isn't Facebook, this isn't Instagram. You know, I want to have a conversation, a connection with the people in the audience right here, right now. You got time And everybody says it passes you by But don't go thinking that's how it has to be And you'll last by And you'll learn by breaking your bones 
15 years ago, there was a demo derby every Friday and Saturday at every fair period. That's just That was just part of it. But nowadays, there's some fairs that don't even have demo derby. Um, I've promoted some fairs for two or three years that had a demo, and you know they called and said, hey, you know, we're not having the demo next year. We're cutting the fair back to three days. And it's like, holy cow, it was seven. I think that's the challenge, and I think that will constantly be the challenge for county fairs as well as state fairs, is to try to find something that people want to see. With the growing proclivity of people to just use technology to communicate with one another, less people feel they need to go anywhere and do anything. It used to be a lot of uh, families and, you know, small children, mothers with little kids that were home during the day and so they could take children to, to the fair. And It's not uncommon to go to some county fairs and there are more people working rides and selling food than there are people there as guests of the county fair. It's a strange decline and I don't think it has to happen and I don't think it should happen. Parents are working and busy and there's so many other things people do now. I remember when I was a kid, if I wanted to hang out with my friend, I had to call his house, hope that he picked up and not his mother or father, or I had to just walk there. You and your five buddies got on your bikes and rode to the fair, and you had to mow the yard all day Saturday to get 20 bucks from your parents to go to the fair. The whole neighborhood lived outside in the summer, and they would wait for my husband to get home from work, and. They had a good time. They'd go on bike rides. We'd play, you know, hide and seek and kick the can and all of that in the evenings. And Something that, you know, just reflects what our world is, you know, changing into. People have moved on from the farm. People have moved on into suburbs and cities. And we don't have to raise our own animals. We don't have to, you know, we can go to the grocery store and get access to a lot of these items that we didn't have to raise ourselves. For sure a wonderful memory for me to have that. And, you know, I think... Um, it's just part of summer. But you got time And everybody says it passes you by but Don't go thinking that's how it has to be Demo, 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 tonight at the Champaign County Fair. Join us for a smashing good time. This year's Demolition Derby features Modwire, Compact, 80 stock cars and vans. Watch the mud fly as your favorite drivers crash their hunks of junk to victory for cash prizes up to $11,800. And don't forget your earplugs. 7 o'clock tonight, only at the Champaign County Fairgrounds in Urbana. I've had booze, I've had beer cans thrown at me, I've had police escorted out, I've had knockout drag outs. I mean, it's been a real treat sometimes. And I've been doing it all my life, so it's kind of hard to beat someone that's been doing the same thing over and over and over and over, but that's just part of the sport. That'll never go away. That's in any sport, you know, whether you're playing baseball, it's because you went to a better baseball camp than I did. Well, no, it's because I've, I've practiced every night for seven days a week, and you chose to go partying and practice once a month. Well, what's the outcome of that going to be?
champion sandwich. Wiener on a bun. Delicious, mild, tender, and juicy yellow band wieners will bring to your table at home the same meat-rich, savory goodness that you enjoy at the races. So good to everyone's taste. Oscar Mayer, yellow band wieners, 1948. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small got first and second and the rosette very nice Granddaughter is going to be thrilled. That's her, her ladybug dress for her birthday, and she wants the ribbons. <laughs> She's so excited. I get the ribbons. I said, sure. Meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. interesting people and you get to hear their story and hear how their story is different from your story and then you build relationships that you'll never forget. I think that's a lot of it, just hanging out with people and talking and everybody gets along and I think that friendships you make and over the years I still talk to a lot of the people that I met when I was little showing cattle. How you doing buddy? Not too bad, how about Looking you? good. Living the dream. I think a fair and whether it's you're in concessions or 4-H um, or um, any of those kind of events that take place, there's a camaraderie. You shake hands with people. You want to do right by them. There are certain times that you think that everybody needs to go to therapy when, when everybody gets tired and hot and all that stuff and you just got to get away from each other for a little bit. Go take a walk or something. <laughs> When you go from fair to fair, it's like going home again. You see your old friends and neighbors, people you haven't seen all year, and it's like uh, getting reacquainted. I imagine that I've got as many friends out here on these fairgrounds as I have at home, and I know as many, maybe more. Dear future self, well, summer is officially over. It went so fast. I'm so glad I decided to show our heifers again. It was hard work, but a ton of fun. Most of all, I love being with my family and friends at the fair. There's nothing like it. I know we're making great memories for years to come. Until next year, love yourself. People come to the county fair to really show their strength as a community. It kind of brings people together in one common fun thing that isn't rocket science. It's just enjoyment. And I've gotten to see so many amazing, wonderful communities with all different kinds of people coming together, sometimes for just the shared experience of being on a Tilt-A-Whirl. Sometimes it's to check out the livestock. Sometimes it's just to be with one another. But it's, it's more than that. It's a whole community of support wanting to be a part of helping a community be close-knit and helping their kids grow and understand what it means to live in our world today.
I mean, it looks so pretty on you. Appreciate everybody coming out to the Champaign County Fair and I've been working a lot. I haven't been running over the years, but I decided to dig a car out of the weeds and pull it down and put a couple plates on it and come have some fun and my luck turned out in my favor tonight. Too soon, all the fun comes to an end. But our friends are very happy. They've had a wonderful day at the fair.